What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Lockdown 23 and 1. You'll recall he's charged with involuntary manslaughter for the shooting death of Cameron Lamb. The fatal shooting of Cameron Lamb happened on December 3rd, 2019, when the detective and his partner responded to a traffic incident involving a red pickup truck in Kansas City. A police helicopter had observed a red pickup truck driving and entering a driveway at the back of a home. The officers dressed in plain clothes and wearing a police department vests arrived at the home and entered the backyard without legal warrant and with their guns drawn. Lamb was slowly backing the pickup truck down a ramp into the basement garage and the detective's partner was on Lamb's side of the truck and could see him when he arrived. The officers attempted to tell Lamb to stop but it's unclear if he even heard him. The Valkyrie then shot his gun at Lamb when he seen his left hand pulled up a gun and pointed it at his partner. He takes his left hand with the gun and as he brings it along up and around the left hand side of the steering wheel is when I... Oh shit. My focus moves from that weapon to the center of his chest. I bring my weapon from this position and drive it towards him. And as I acquire the front sight, I discharge around to his center mass. I gotta hear y'all's opinion in the comments section. Are these crocodile tears, pure simulation emulators, or the real deal waterfalls? Let me know, ladies and gentlemen. I love hearing y'all's input. Everyone was wondering whether Detective Eric DeValconeer was going to take the stand or not. He did. His legal team had him lay out the moments that led up to the shooting of Cameron Lamb. Meanwhile, prosecutors tried to question his credibility. I'm just going to ask you, did you plant evidence in this case? No. Did you ask anybody to plant evidence in this case? No. Did you ask anybody? But according to his partner, Lamb had left his hand on the steering wheel with his fingers spread apart. And Lamb also held up his left hand with no gun in it. The indictment says, and keep in mind, this is the detective's partner saying something totally different than what he's saying. This case is absolutely wild. So let's go ahead and jump into the courtroom and uh, just see how things unfold and see how much time that this officer does get because he was found guilty. So a lot of y'all are fans of the whole courtroom analysis. And it brings me a very sad heart to tell you that I won't be doing them anymore. I'm just playing. It's time for the courtroom analysis. By first glance, that looks like a smiley face mug. I gave one to my mother back in 82. And would you look at the seal, it looks like it's engraved on what appears to be none other than an elusive Arctic birch from Scepter Z. No one can go there. No one's allowed. But let's just take a moment. Our recedents are kind of similar. If I were to guess, he's 13% French. Ethernet cable's clean. No lamp, though. His glasses shine like a star. Pulled out that when defendant shot and killed Cameron Lamb, Number one, defendant was not acting in lawful self-defense. Number two, defendant was not acting in lawful defense of Sergeant Schwamm. And three, it being conceded that defendant and Sergeant Schwamm were not effecting an arrest of Cameron Lamb or preventing his escape after an arrest, that defendant did not lawfully utilize deadly force as a law enforcement officer under Missouri use of force laws applicable to such officers. The court further finds from the admissible evidence beyond a reasonable doubt that when defendant followed Sergeant Schwamm into the backyard of 4154 College and engaged Cameron Lamb, ultimately shooting and killing him, he did so without considering or being aware of the substantial and unjustifiable risks associated with his conduct, including, but not limited to, the fact that Sergeant Schwamm and he were unlawfully on the property that they were both escalating a situation that previously had de-escalated and that their actions created or exacerbated the risk that what ultimately occurred would. The court concludes that this conduct was a gross deviation from the standard of care that a reasonable person would exercise in the situation and constituted criminal negligence, as that phrase is designed, defined rather, under Missouri law. Accordingly, as to count one, in which defendant is charged with the Class C felony of involuntary manslaughter in the first degree, the court finds the defendant guilty of the lesser included offense of involuntary manslaughter in the second degree, a Class E felony. As to count two, the unclassified felony of armed criminal action, the court finds the defendant guilty. 
Well, there you have it. The detective was found guilty. Now, my question to you is how much time do you think he's going to get? 10, 15, 20, maybe 30. Let me know in the comment section below how much time you think he's going to get and if you agree with the amount of time that he does end up getting. And the parties have a right to expect that no matter what I hear, I will only consider factors that are appropriate and that I will disregard those that are inappropriate. And that is what I've done here. And as a result, I've concluded as follows. There are a number of facts in this case that are both aggravating and mitigating. Sometimes all at the same time. Don't want that. First and foremost is this undeniable and uncontested fact. Cameron Lamb is dead. Yep. And Eric DeValconeer killed him. Sure did. That's undisputed. Sure is, Your Honor. Cameron Lamb was by all accounts a helpful and loving son, brother, father, and friend. People who have contacted me and who I have heard from today have described him as funny, caring, giving. Miss Gray called him a protector, a jokester, and my favorite of all the ones that I read, not a saint, but our angel. Cameron's Lamb, Cameron Lamb's death leaves an irreparable and unfillable void in the lives of his family and his friends and also in our community. Also, as I'm weighing all these facts, it can't be overlooked that the offense of December 3rd of 2019 were initially set into motion by Cameron Lamb and his decision to chase his girlfriend, girlfriend through city streets at dangerously high speeds, putting motorists and other members of the public at risk. However, those events tragically concluded with the actions of Troy Schwamm and the defendant. Pulling up to defendant's house, Sergeant Schwamm pulling into the driveway, immediately getting out with his weapon drawn, rapidly moving into the backyard, carport, garage area of the house, and defendant doing the same. Both without taking a breath, without pausing for the briefest of moments to consider where they were going, what they would find when they got back there, whether they were acting lawfully in doing so, and whether there might be some other safer option without so much as a, hey, Troy, wait. At any point, Sergeant Schwamm and the defendant could have done this, a fact that is made even more aggravating as the court considers an appropriate sentence in this case by the fact that the one person who ultimately did take a breath that morning was Cameron Lamb. Huh. He did this when at some point, while he was chasing his girlfriend, he decided to discontinue the chase and to go home. Yep, peacefully the too. The video from the helicopter shows this decision, shows how it played out. Cameron Lamb is not racing through the streets of his neighborhood at this point. He's not driving through yards to get away from anyone. He does not abandon the truck and let it roll into someone's yard. Uh, while he flees on foot, rather, he simply pulls into the driveway of his home, pulls around back, puts the vehicle into reverse, and slowly begins backing it down the driveway, under the carport, and into his garage. Then Sergeant Schwamm and Eric DeValconeer arrive, and as the court has found, an encounter that was over and a situation that had de-escalated was again escalated by what I have found, rightly or wrongly was their unlawful entry into the backyard carport area and confrontation. This is an aggravating factor. Class E felony of involuntary manslaughter in the second degree, I sentence you to a term of incarceration in the Missouri Division of Adult Institutions of three years. On the unclassified felony of armed criminal action, I sentence you to a term of incarceration of six years in the Missouri Department of Corrections. Those cases, or rather those counts and sentences, will run concurrent with one another for a total term of incarceration of six years. There we have it, six years, ladies and gentlemen. Do you agree with that sentencing? Like I said, be sure to let me know in the comment section below. If you follow the rules, the regulations, chances are you won't have no issues. Don't bend them, don't twist them, don't manipulate them in any way, shape, or form because it could end up biting you in your ass. But hopefully y'all enjoyed and learned a little something. And until the next time, don't forget to hit that like, subscribe, notification bell if you enjoy.